Welcome to another segment of Up Close and Personal, our series profiling leaders of the city of Taylor. I'm your host, Carl Zymack. Today's guest is State Representative Jamie Thompson of the 28th District. Representative Thompson, a Republican, has held the position since being elected in November of 2021. She's one of 110 members of the House of Representatives, all of whom are serving two-year uh, two terms. She's also one of two state senators representing the city of Taylor, the other being James DeSena. The 28th district covers both Monroe and Wayne counties. The district includes portions of Frenchtown, Berlin, Rockwood, Brownstown, Flat Rock, Taylor, and Woodhaven. The district was formed after an independent commission redrew the legislative boundaries uh, after the 2020 census. Representative Thompson lives in Brownstown Township with her husband Ronald and three young grandchildren. The couple has two adult sons. Jamie, welcome to the show. Hi, hi, it's, thank you. It's great to have you down here on a Friday. Uh, things are, I, I assume, tooling down for the week? Yes. Okay, and Lansing, what's your regular schedule like up there? Uh, it's pretty regular. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So I am in district on Monday. Mm -hmm. Tuesday morning I leave for Lansing after the grandkids go to school. Mm -hmm. And then I spend Tuesday night, Wednesday night in Lansing after session on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Then I head back home to district. Okay. And then um, Friday I'm in district. And then the weekend I try to spend more family time. Now when you're here, are you just decompressing from there or when you... When you're there, are you decompressing from the grandkids? <laughs> Sometimes it works out both ways. I hear you. And hear we you. originally, my intent was never to stay in Lansing. Okay. It's about a two hour drive. Yeah, that's a little bit different. The original intent mm -hmm. was going to be to make the drive. And okay. then what I found happening is when we, I would get home, even if mm -hmm. it was at seven o'clock, mm -hmm. it would sort of throw in, uh, throw a loop into what my husband had going with the kids. Gotcha. So if they were calming mm -hmm. down, they were doing their homework, they were, mm -hmm. maybe they were in bed. Sometimes mm -hmm. it was a late night, the dogs would start barking, kids get up, oh, Grammy's home. And mm -hmm. it was just causing too much confusion for them. I think oh. it was better that, plus then I can um, kind of decompress and, mm -hmm. You read some legislation and um, maybe meet with some representatives in the evening. Mm. Um, and then Monday and Friday, I always try to do in-district events. Okay. So I'm always mm -hmm. trying to be in the district as much as possible. And with a spread out district like that, you gotta be bouncing around quite a bit. Yes, lot. yes. And mm -hmm. uh, being in mm -hmm. Wayne County, being a native of Wayne County, mm -hmm. trying to let people in Monroe know that I'm, I'm very concerned about your issues. And mm -hmm. if there's an event, please reach out if we missed it. And mm -hmm. I, I wanna get down there and let you know that I'm your voice as well as I am for uh, Wayne County. Understood. Mm -hmm. uh, you've lived in Brownstown uh, for, for quite some mm -hmm. time. Born in Dearborn? No. Well, oh, it was okay. It was, it's okay. one of those where everybody pretty much was born in Oakwood Hospital. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Where did you Where did you grow up before you moved to Brownstown? Yes. So I grew up in Southwest Detroit. Okay. All I right. grew up on Homer Street, which is, if anyone is familiar with Woodmere Cemetery, oh, okay. kind of Springwells Werner area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we lived there until I was 15. Mm -hmm. So I went to um, elementary school. I went to a small parochial school, St. Mm -hmm. Stephen's. Okay. Uh, very small, like my eighth grade graduating class maybe had 10 kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, started out at a Lutheran high school, mm -hmm. did a little bit of time at Southwestern High School. Mm -hmm. Big transition from parochial school to public school. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah. then I ended up, my mom ended up uh, purchasing a home in Brownstown. Mm -hmm. So when we were, I was about 15, we moved to Brownstown. Okay, and you finished out at Woodhaven? Or? Yes. Okay, already. Uh, and uh, let's see here, tell us about your parents a little bit and your family growing up. So we came from a small family, but um, grandma and grandpa always lived with us. So at that time, when I was growing up, and I do have some interesting things about my interesting, sad, um, just very unique, I think, maybe mm -hmm. to some people. So we always lived with my grandparents. So my mother had two brothers. Um, she was the youngest of three, mm -hmm. and then my grandma and grandpa. My grandmother mm -hmm. uh, came over from Hiawatha, Ontario. Okay. So we are Native American. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have my status card, and so do my children. Oh my. So okay. uh, she came over from Ontario, grew mm -hmm. up on the reserve, mm -hmm. came over here when she was about 19, met my grandfather who actually came from Tennessee to work at Chrysler okay. when he was about 19. Mm -hmm. um, they had three children. Uh, my mom was the youngest of three. And then when my mom met my father, mm -hmm. my father moved in with my grand, when they got married, moved in with my grandparents. Okay. So we grew up mm -hmm. in my grandparents' home. Mm -hmm. 
And then um, my sister came along a lot later in life, mm -hmm. which was unique because uh, my mom never intended on having another one, and my sister was born when I was 12. It's funny how that works out so Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so my sister came along when I was 12, so mm -hmm. there's 12 years between us. Mm -hmm. And then um, my mother's youngest brother was killed in a motorcycle accident when, she, when he was 18 when my mom was pregnant with me. Okay. And that, no, it would have been, he was 19 and my mom was pregnant with me. Okay. Um, and then her oldest brother passed away of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. So she lost both of her brothers um, and she was actually pregnant with my sister at the time. Wow. So lost her youngest brother when she was pregnant with me, mm -hmm. lost her oldest when she was pregnant with my sister. My goodness. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Now her oldest brother, um, his wife, um, left him and left mm -hmm. his child, mm -hmm. which my grandmother and grandfather adopted, mm -hmm. and my mom raised as well. Okay. So my cousin Shannon, mm -hmm. he was raised just with me like my brother. Right. Uh, right. So we were raised. It was just the two of us. Uh, my dad was a truck driver. Mm -hmm. He drove for United Van Lines. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't home a lot because he drove over the road. Okay. My mom's a nurse, mm -hmm. and then um, really when we moved from Brownstown or moved to Brownstown. In all honesty, living in Southwest Detroit, we lived in a great neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Neighbors watched out for themselves. I felt like we were very fortunate. Mm -hmm. You know, we were we were spoiled. We were well taken care of. Uh, going to parochial school, mm -hmm. um, but the gangs started to kind of take over. And um, I think my cousin Shannon, um, losing his not knowing his mother, mm -hmm. losing his father, right. um, he started going down a bad path. Okay. So that, that's another reason why they moved us out of Detroit and into mm -hmm. Brownstown. Mm -hmm. um, shortly after we moved away. Um, he came back down to Detroit at 16. Mm. We, there was only six months between us, okay. so um, both the same age. And um, he was shot in the back, mm -hmm. and he was paralyzed. Mm -hmm. um, so he was in a wheelchair. And then uh, he was in a wheelchair from 16 to 32. And then moving forward, 30, at 32, he actually was murdered. Oh. Yeah, so that's been um, a lot of loss in our family. Yeah, I was going to say, For my mother as yes. well, because my mother mm -hmm. raised him. Right. We, we, even mm -hmm. though we were first cousins, we were raised like brother and sister mm -hmm. because, like I said, my sister never came around until we were 12. Mm -hmm. um, then my mom and dad did get divorced when um, I was 15 and my sister was three. Mm -hmm. My dad moved down to Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Hard to have a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think I have a stronger mm -hmm. relationship with him than my sister does because she was so young when they separated. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, try to keep in contact, try to see him. Mm -hmm. But being in Kentucky, it's a little hard. Does he continue to uh, drive a truck? Or no, is he no, no. Or? He retired. He ended up um, hurting his back. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. he's been retired for some time. Okay. All righty. Boy, that's, that is quite a story. It is. And when I talk mm -hmm. to people, you know, in, in certain situations and even my, my views mm -hmm. politically, I've had a lot of loss. I mean, mm -hmm. I've had, you know, my brother, I, you know, he's my cousin, but I call him my brother. Mm -hmm. um, he was murdered. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, the person was never caught. Um, and even for my children, you know, they were probably seven, nine, and ten mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, he was my daughter's godfather. Mm -hmm. He, uh, my my children were very close with him. They called him Unky. That was their uncle. Yeah, that point and of it was closure is It was important. a very hard thing mm -hmm. for my kids. Yeah, and if you don't if you don't get that point of closure, I know I I, I can. I can listen and relate, but I can't totally relate. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, finding finding the, the killer, those kind of mm -hmm. things, those really do go a long way toward toward closing, yeah. helping people close those, mm -hmm. those type of situations. Very difficult to live with that yeah. kind of a thing. No doubt about that. And your mother is still up here now, right? Yeah, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah. so my mom actually uh, lived in Taylor for, so mm -hmm. she sold the house in Brownstown at one point and, mm -hmm. um, my grandfather had some rental properties in Taylor. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Ended up uh, moving in with him because mm -hmm. he was getting elderly and he actually got dementia late in life. Okay. So I think mm -hmm. I might have a picture of my grandpa up in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, actually that is, is that my, <laughs> yeah. So that's my, that, my grandpa, my mom, me mm -hmm. and my sister. That was when mm -hmm. we had to end stage Alzheimer's. We ended up uh, putting him into a group home. Okay. So mm -hmm. he never got Alzheimer's until he was 90. Oh my. And he lived till he was 93. Wow. Um, and he, when he passed away, he passed away mm -hmm. in his sleep. Mm -hmm. God was gracious to that man. Mm -hmm. He, mm -hmm. his skin was intact. He, he fell asleep and he passed away. My grandmother passed away in um, '99. Uh, she had a lot of heart problems. Mm -hmm. um, 
-hmm. dialysis, mm -hmm. very sick. My mom being a nurse, she cared for her a lot. Mm -hmm. And that was another thing. My mom was a nurse. She worked all the time. My grandmother was ill. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather tried to take care of my grandma. Mm -hmm. um, my sister being a lot younger than me, I took care of my sister a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. even I can remember mm -hmm. 16 and having my sister and my friends saying, she ain't going with us, and I'm like, God, uh, she's going with me. You get out of my car because she's going was, with me. I was going to say, so, you, were, yeah. you were made to be a nurse. I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout your life. Uh, let's, let's, let's turn gears just for a second here. The, the Native American uh, slang. Are you active in that, in that movement? Oh, uh, I, I movement? am as much as I can. It's a mm -hmm. little, dis it's, it's really cool, but it's a little disappointing. So because mm -hmm. We are Native American, Hiawatha First Nation is our tribe. We're okay. part of the First Nations of Ontario. Mm -hmm. uh, very cool. But being in Canada, mm -hmm. it's not US. Oh, I so see. Okay. Uh, we have our status cards. Mm -hmm. um, we, could, we could participate in voting within the band. Mm -hmm. You know, I get the notification every year. Mm -hmm. We spent a lot of time on, on the lake, on mm -hmm. Rice Lake mm -hmm. in Hiawatha when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of time, almost, honestly, until about COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, we, mm -hmm. we really stopped making the trips over there after COVID. Okay. Um, yeah, the border really got tightened down. It did. It got really yeah. tightened down. Things mm -hmm. got different. People in Canada mm -hmm. got really different and um, very, very interesting mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. Love mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, I, I have that and that I have my card and my children have their card. Mm -hmm. um, talking about that a little bit more now in the legislature, I think they're finding mm -hmm. out that, you know, wow, we, we have a Native American who mm -hmm. actually you know, mm -hmm. is a Native American, even if it's to Canada. Right. So I'm kind of trying to make connections with like some of the tribal leaders, even though they belong to different tribes. There's 12 federally recognized tribes in the U.S. and Michigan, okay. in Michigan. Mm -hmm. So my tribe would not be one of them, but they're very familiar with the First Nations. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I keep saying I really want to have some conversations, kind mm -hmm. of for personal reasons, because mm -hmm. I can't imagine that somewhere along the lines, my grandmother was the only one that migrated to Michigan. <laughs> you know, I think that yeah, there has yeah, to be that's true. somewhere. Mm -hmm. And in those days, people didn't talk a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and my sister and I's frustration with my mom sometimes is when my grandma passed, mm -hmm. the older she got, the more she started to try to tell me stories about things. Mm -hmm. So I knew about mm -hmm. family and different things. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother, she would always say her generation was the generation that didn't ask questions. You know, my grandmother didn't know that who is, her father was. That is, yeah. That my is grandmother had nine, nine yeah. brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and no one knew who their dad was. Wow. Yeah, so there's a lot of family mm -hmm. history that we don't know. Mm -hmm. and, and I would say, Mom, why wouldn't you ask? And I think my generation, you know, I'm mm -hmm. 46, right. maybe we started mm -hmm. getting a little more nosier and mm -hmm. my mom was like, it was a respect thing. We didn't ask. If your grandma didn't tell me, I didn't ask. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, something I, and my daughter was very fascinated about that as well. Interesting. Well, sp speaking of your daughter, this we were talking off camera before the show. Uh, about two years ago, you faced the type of tragedy that is obviously a nightmare for every parent. You lost your daughter in a motorcycle accident. Can you tell us about her first? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What was she like? What was her name? <laughs> Jordan. Okay, Jordan. And what Jordan was she like? Ashley. Mm -hmm. And I remember everyone name always said that that sounded like a bedspread. <laughs> And I would think of the Jordan Ashley collection. Mm -hmm. um, my husband and I like to say when you think of Jordan, you think of a girl dancing in flowers. Oh. She just, she's very strong, mm -hmm. beautiful. Um, she became a mom very young, mm -hmm. but um, she, she pushed through it. She graduated. She had three children. Mm -hmm. um, not a very good relationship with their dad, okay. very young. Mm -hmm. um, we supported her as much as we could. She was, she was a cheerleader, she was a dancer, mm -hmm. um, very passionate and empathetic to people, mm -hmm. always would take other people's problems on on her own, mm -hmm. um, very lighthearted. Mm -hmm. Just like we say, we like to think that she'd be dancing in a, a field of flowers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so she in June, June 24th of 2021, and actually the really, it, the really crazy dynamics of it all was mm -hmm. when I talked about losing my grandfather. Mm -hmm. My grandfather passed away June 22nd of 2021. Mm -hmm. So that morning we got the phone call, four or five in the morning that my grandfather had passed away. Mm -hmm. um, everyone called him Papa. Mm -hmm. He would have been my daughter's great grandfather. Okay. Uh, she was very close to him and their relationships was very interesting because my grandfather 
who's a very strong Christian Southern man, but very quiet, very reserved, and non-affectionate. Mm -hmm. I don't remember ever sitting on my grandfather's lap or him telling me he loved me. Mm -hmm. Now, he did things for me, actually, because my mom worked and I figure skated. Mm -hmm. He drove me to figure skating, you know, from the time I started at seven mm -hmm. until I, I stopped at 17 and I mm -hmm. got my license. So, but he never told me he loved me. He was never affectionate. And then my daughter comes along as, you know, his first great-grandchild. Actually, she was his first great-grandchild. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And she would not let him get away with that. She made him say, I love you. Mm -hmm. She made him hug her and kiss her. And uh, they were very close. He used to call her his Jordy. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially when he got dementia, she would help my mom a lot mm -hmm. and take, taking care of him. Mm -hmm. um, so that morning we got the call that Papa had passed away and our whole family went, my daughter included. And um, it was really nice because she was in nursing school as well, learning to be a nurse. And she worked as a CNA at uh, South Shore. Okay. And uh, she actually did a, the post-mortem care on him. Mm -hmm. um, she took really? his Foley out. Wow. She cleaned him up. Okay. And um, we were all very sad, but we were blessed to, that he had mm -hmm. been given such a long life and mm -hmm. that he, he passed away gracefully. Mm -hmm. Really hard on my daughter. That was a Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, we all went to my mom's. My mom was still living in Taylor over on Banner at the time. Mm -hmm. And we were going through family pictures. We were going to put together a video. My daughter um, wanted to be the one to take his suit to the cleaners. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was going out with a friend that night, mm -hmm. um, which was actually what, what ended up happening. I remember talking to her about 11.30. Her and the kid's dad had been broken up for about eight months. Mm -hmm. um, fi they were together for nine years, nine years, three kids. They broke up. Uh, about eight months before that, um, he kind of took off, never came back around, mm -hmm. and um, she had started dating someone new. Mm -hmm. My husband and I thought he seemed okay. Mm -hmm. Our biggest concern was, you know, she has three small children. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is you know that's a that's a whole new role for right. for someone that's young, and mm -hmm. and uh, he was showing signs of being a little abusive. Okay. And she was trying mm -hmm. to pull away, mm -hmm. and as she had my husband go set some uh, uh, cameras up at the house. Mm -hmm. And then and was going to break it off with him. Well, that night she said that um, she was being kind of funny on the phone. And I mm -hmm. said, "Is Chad there?" Mm -hmm. And she said, um, "Can't talk about it, Mom. I'll talk about it with you tomorrow." And I'm like, "You better call me and let me know what's going on." Yeah. Yep, I'll call you in the morning. I said, "You get Papa's suit." She said, "Yep, Papa's suit's good. Call you in the morning, Mom." That was about 10:30, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And then um, seven o'clock in the morning, the police knocked on the door. Oh my! And uh, don't happened? remember. Um, they'd went out for a drink mm -hmm. in Romulus mm -hmm. um, at a bar near the airport and um, he was driving a crotch rocket. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the reason why I ran for state representative and passions I have about getting to young women and trying to bring awareness to this emotional uh, abuse and then physical abuse that's mm -hmm. going on in a lot of our young people's lives. She ran into, at the, at the bar that night, she ran into a friend she went to high school with. Mm -hmm. Um, this new guy she was seeing got very jealous um, because he said hello to her. A fight ensued. They got kicked out. And um, people there that were in the parking lot said he's had too much to drink. He's angry. Don't get on the bike with him. We'll give you a ride home. Mm -hmm. And she said, I can't. I have to go with him. If I don't go with him, it's going to be a problem. Well, and I don't, I don't want to fight. And mm -hmm. I'm just going to get him home. It'll be okay. And they both put their helmets on. Mm -hmm. And five minutes after leaving the bar, mm -hmm. the first 911 phone call came in. Wow. She was, um, he was driving recklessly. He was driving 120 miles an hour. There was no other vehicle involved. He just lost control of the bike. We didn't know he had a bike. Mm -hmm. He had purchased the bike maybe a week prior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, she was thrown from the bike 100 feet. Mm -hmm. She was taken instantly. Uh, he survived five days and he passed away. Boy. So we had a tragedy. Mm -hmm. we had a joint service for my grandfather and my daughter, and my wow. grandfather had an open casket, and mm -hmm. my daughter had a closed casket. How do you cope with that? Do you do you ever get you never get over that? God. Yeah. That God. What, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to God. Mm -hmm. My entire life. I, you know, I was raised in a parochial school. I've, you know, considered myself a, a Christian woman. My children were baptized. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, pray for forgiveness for my sins. Try, try to be the best person I can. Believe that Jesus died for my sins. But I don't think at any point in my life 
until after losing her did I ever, I've heard people say you have that moment mm -hmm. that you, um, you're saved or you, and I would say, well, why, do, why would you announce that? God mm -hmm. knows how you feel. He knows mm -hmm. your heart. He knows if you believe or not. Mm -hmm. But I remember sitting on my front porch listening to wind chimes that the neighbor had given me for the accident mm -hmm. and just not being able to breathe, feeling mm -hmm. like I was in a desert. And mm -hmm. I just remember thinking, I can't breathe. I can't breathe and, and telling God, okay, you have to take this from me because I can't bear this. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of things changed in my life at that point. Mm -hmm. I think when I really gave all that pain to God to tell him I can't bear it, and I know that she is with you, and I know that something between you and her had to happen for some reason that I needed to raise her children. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was to make a difference in their life. Uh, a lot of answers that you never get, you mm -hmm. never get answered. Mm -hmm. It was concerned was she having fun when they were driving? Was she scared when they were driving? Were they arguing? Mm -hmm. Was she screaming, stop, you're going too fast? Was she, where was her mindset? And um, it, it really, it destroyed me for quite a few months. Mm -hmm. My husband and I were never on the same page sometimes with our grief. Mm -hmm. um, that was the hardest part because you're, you're having a really bad day and then your spouse is kind of having a better day mm -hmm. But you're, you know, I could remember thinking, I'm good today. We're good. We're going to go do something. And then he would be having a bad day. And I'd be like, oh, I just got out of that. So getting on the same page was a little tricky. Um, very devastating for my mother, losing her father and her first grandchild. And mm -hmm. Jordan and my mom were best friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, me and my daughter were very close. Don't get me wrong. But Jordan and my mom were like thick as thieves. Mm -hmm. They just, that was her first grandchild. It was her life. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom's still very bitter, very angry at God mm -hmm. in many ways still. And, and through all of that, you end up with three really young grandchildren who are yes. almost like your children. They now, are. Literally. They uh, are, and they are now. What's that like? They have blessed me mm -hmm. so much. And so many people always say they're blessed to have you, or mm -hmm. thank you for, for, take, for doing what you've done for them. Those kids are so lucky to have you. Where would they be without you? And I always say it's the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. We're so lucky to have them. I don't know where I would be without them. Mm -hmm. I have a, a piece of her in each one of them. Mm -hmm. I get a chance to raise three children, you know, maybe learning from the lessons that, you know, everyone makes mistakes as parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they bring such joy to our lives, to our family. Mm -hmm. My mother, she's retired now, and uh, she helps a lot with them. They're very busy, they're very active. They're, um, Bryson is now five, mm -hmm. Braxton is seven, and like I was telling you, she, me and my husband joke that uh, my daughter's soul just jumped into Braxton, because she's so much like her mama. <laughs> so much like her mama. And um, Bentley, he's nine. Bentley, I think, has, has, has taken the toll on him the most, because he was mm -hmm. the oldest. Mm -hmm. Um, Braxton again like her mom she her in her world it's magic and it's butterflies and unicorns and she's very happy and bubbly and sassy and girly and uh, she is the light of my life did it did their existence in your family and in your house help bring you and your husband together it did. More? It, 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 it would did. seem like it would. It did. Yeah. Okay. It right. did. You know, at first mm -hmm. you would think, because we were, we were kind of almost to the point where we were going to be empty nesters. Mm -hmm. Really, maybe the year prior, that summer prior to the accident was mm -hmm. when we kind of started realizing, you know, at Jordan, at the time of the accident, Jordan was 24. Um, Jesse, our middle son, was 22. And Jackson was 20. Mm -hmm. So Jesse had moved out. Um, and was on his own. Jordan was on her own. She lived with us a lot with the kids, being mm -hmm. a young mom, and yeah. they mm -hmm. moved in for almost a year during, actually, when we were all locked down, and mm -hmm. we were like, oh no, we're not getting separated from our grandkids. Mm -hmm. We moved her in right away so they couldn't, you know, when the families sure. weren't allowed to be with each other. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we just had Jackson at home, and he was 20, so he was hardly mm -hmm. ever at home. Mm -hmm. And we were realizing sometimes, wow, we could go away for the weekend. Or, wow, we don't have to make dinner tonight. <laughs> it was just kind of hitting us. Yeah, that yeah. There's mm -hmm. a realization sometimes where you're like, we really are way too uptight and stressed. Mm -hmm. We don't really even have any responsibility. Like, we would take the kids on the weekends. And, mm -hmm. and my husband, that was what was funny because he was always, um, 
he knew that being a single mom for Jordan was very hard on her mm -hmm. and that she'd lot of, lost a lot of her youth and you know a lot of her freedom and um, he would always try to give it to her so I could remember she would say you know um, can I take the boat out this weekend with my friends can you watch the kids mm -hmm. and I would be like what you know we just had them all last weekend I want to go out on the boat and my husband would be like let her go we'll uh, watch the kids let her have fun yeah. she needs to have a fun she needs a break you know and she'd be the one that she would uh, some of the guys maybe she'd go out with her friends the guys couldn't get the boat in the mm -hmm. water and Jordan would be like get out of the way I got it you know and she just <laughs> would get in there and if there was a problem she'd solve it and she'd figure it out um, my husband had a really hard time I think even my boys that looking back realizing that a lot of the stuff with relationships that could have led to decisions she made with this um, this really terrible ab abusive relationships mm -hmm. mentally mm -hmm. physically and, and things that she kept from us that we found out later on in life. I found a journal of hers mm -hmm. um, that was really eye-opening, the things that she kept from us with mm -hmm. what had happened to her with relationships. And I think they felt like they couldn't have, they didn't protect her, or they should have protected her. And that was my husband's biggest heartache, was I should have protected her. Well, talk about a roller coaster ride. A big time. Big time. Big time. Yeah. And you Without could go doubt. to a dark mm -hmm. place, and you could say, I can't oh, absolutely. do this. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. you say, I have so much to, um, to give of myself to mm -hmm. others because in doing so, I feel peace or I feel happiness. Mm -hmm. and, in, and being a representative and talking to people and especially when you talk to people and you, and you understand them and you hear mm -hmm. them and you're not just, you didn't run just mm -hmm. because maybe your family was in politics or for any other reason other than to just give back to people and well, help was, people. That was my next question. All of this is swirling around. You're you're on this never-ending roller coaster. It seems like, and you decide to run for for the legislature. Uh, you're a practicing nurse already. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got young kids at home through this tragedy. You you had never held elected office before, correct? No. So that that's another thing. What in the world makes you change gears like that? Is it? I, I know before again before the show you were telling me that something a button pushed yeah. at that point what what was your what was your thought process well i knew the seat i knew we had redistricted and in, mm -hmm. and in 20, 2020 um i just we my husband and i did start waking up to politics mm -hmm. you know um the lockdown affected so many people being mm -hmm. a nurse mm -hmm. i was just very empathetic and angered um, about a lot of the way that that it was handled mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know families that were kept away from their loved ones when they were passing sure. away and sure. um, things mm -hmm. maybe that we were doing that I was never that wasn't what I was taught to do as a nurse mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot of nurses who were very frustrated so we started getting politically involved and like well who is our representative what's going on in the state and we had a lot of time to be at home you know mm -hmm. when everyone was locked down mm -hmm. so we did get, start getting involved in politics a little bit and um, was watching that seat and wondering who was going to run for it mm -hmm. and then I just thought crazily oddly enough a, a guy that I'd met kind mm -hmm. of in the political world I mm -hmm. sent him a text and I said is it crazy if I run and his response was what did he say something like he texted me back you are finally seeing in you what I've known all along and I said really and he's like mm -hmm. go for it and me and my husband talked, and my husband wasn't okay at first. Mm -hmm. We I remember mm -hmm. one time when I was making this decision, there was probably three or four of us. Or there was Actually, there would have been three people. Mm -hmm. And then he said, if anyone's in favor of her running, raise your hand. Two of them raised their hand. He mm -hmm. did not raise his hand. Okay. And then he said, okay, two of three. Cause he was waiting for this big sign from sure, God. Sure. He was waiting mm -hmm. to hear someone say, do it. Mm -hmm. You know. And then he actually, before I left the house today, he kind of gave me a kiss and he just said you know how proud he was of me and I don't think anyone could could represent our district as well as you mm -hmm. and um, you were meant to do this everything in your life that's happened mm -hmm. you were meant to do this political in politics like and I think everything that's gotten me to the point in my life in nursing there's a lot of politics in nursing mm -hmm. there was politics um, within nursing school there, yeah there's politics everywhere. there's politics yeah, everywhere yeah, yeah. And, and different mm -hmm. things that I've done in my life I'm a very strong advocate for things mm -hmm. I believe in. I'm a mm -hmm. very strong advocate for mothers and children mm -hmm. and uh, patients. And it was just like, I can, I can still advocate, mm -hmm. but I can advocate at a higher level. Mm -hmm. The redistricting really opened it did. doors. You know, there's yeah, no did. doubt. Yeah, it, uh, it 100% did because it, it mm -hmm. made that district. It was still projected to be mm -hmm. a Democrat win, right. a slightly Democrat mm -hmm. win. And I put a lot of work into the campaign. I let people really know mm -hmm. who I was. I knocked. Mm -hmm. a lot of doors and I think that was 
that was the difference because when we looked at the numbers, even as we look at the votes, mm -hmm. um, there was way more Democrat voters. So the, mm -hmm. it was a higher Democrat vote than a Republican vote, but it was overwhelmingly independent. It was an overwhelming independent mm -hmm. voter mm -hmm. that really just wanted someone to listen to them. Let me, uh, that leads directly to, to my next question that I had here, and that's the city of Taylor itself in the old district, okay, had traditionally local, local representation, okay? Mm -hmm. If you were the state senator or the state, the state representative, you were usually a Taylor-centric, Taylor resident type, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether it was Alex Garza That's or all the way back yeah. to Greg Petoniak and everybody else. Uh, and, but now you're in office as a Republican, uh, Jim DeSena, okay, uh, it, it, same issue with, with redistricting. He jumps in, he's another Republican. Uh, as, as representing Taylor, which voted, majority voted for neither of mm -hmm. you two, okay, yep. how has that played with you? I can't, I, 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 right. I've talked to Jim about this before, but I'm, I'm curious, how, how does that play? I mean, when you come into Taylor, are you welcome with open arms? Are, are people apprehensive because you have the GOP logo? You know, that kind of thing. What, what do you sense? In Taylor specifically, mm -hmm. um, I think people were very surprised at who I was. Okay. When I started, mm -hmm. you know, going mm -hmm. to as many events as I could, mm -hmm. could get to mm -hmm. or, you know, and knocking doors, you're generally going to either independent voters or Republican mm -hmm. voters, maybe sure. soft Democrats, mm -hmm. they may, or maybe they're one issue voters. Right. So the, the reception at the doors was really well, but, mm -hmm. you know, the reception in the city as a whole, um, I think people were surprised that mm -hmm. they made an assumption that I was going to be a far right, mm -hmm. unapproachable, Per a person that was completely opposite from someone who maybe had represented them in the past, mm -hmm. and they then they really realized that there was a lot of things we agreed on. Mm -hmm. There was, mm -hmm. a, to me, it was about how can I better serve Taylor? Mm -hmm. What does Taylor need? When I would meet with the mayor, mm -hmm. what is it you need? When I would meet with city council, I've met with um, mm -hmm. the judges. I've made mm -hmm. a connection even with mm -hmm. um, the Democrat judge mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. um, treatment court mm -hmm. and, and th mm -hmm. things that are going on mental health is very personal and passion a passion of mine is a nurse mm -hmm. and in the crisis i'm seeing within our children and our families mm -hmm. so having a nurse and being able to advocate for everybody having genuine conversations mm -hmm. putting politics aside and saying what's best for the city mm -hmm. it was refreshing to people and it was refreshing to me because i was like hey they're they may be on the opposite side of the aisle but there is a lot we agree on mm -hmm. and 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 they really want we want good schools we want uh, stepping stones for our family. We want mm -hmm. better for the next generation. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm excited to even you know keep keep growing and getting more relationships built within the community. It is it is interesting when you do have an opportunity to get past the polarization that's out there right now because it, it it after a while it gets nauseating. It has because it's it's as if you know you don't even know that person, but because you say this and they think that, you can't even have a conversation, yep. which is pretty pathetic. It is, and I think that a lot of people in Michigan mm -hmm. have had enough of that. Mm -hmm. The majority mm -hmm. of Michigan, I believe, mm -hmm. would like Michigan to come to the middle right. in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where you look at the representation in both the House mm -hmm. and the Senate, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. pretty close to a 50-50. I right. mean, yeah. we're two seats mm -hmm. apart. Mm -hmm. You know, we represent 50% 50, 50 mm -hmm. of Michigan, and mm -hmm. our colleagues on the other aisle, side of the aisle represent 50% of Michigan. Sometimes I think it would be perfect if we mandated that it had to be 50-50. Someone, <laughs> someone told me, so I did talk, I did talk mm -hmm. to a previous representative who said that that was mm -hmm. when we were at a 50-50 at a split at yeah. one point. Uh -huh. They said that that was when they got the best legislation passed mm -hmm. and put through because they actually had to sit down and work together. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was nobody, um, you know, they're, there is a lot of, and I know that the Democrats were in the minority mm -hmm. for a long time, mm -hmm. um, so there's a bit of chest puffing going on. Oh yeah, I and, think so. Um, yeah. Not yeah. playing mm -hmm. by the rules, and okay. uh, but mm -hmm. then there's some that that you mm -hmm. know you can work with, mm -hmm. and and you have the same uh, interests mm -hmm. or the same passions in helping people, mm -hmm. and they see try to see past that. Mm -hmm. So there are opportunities to build relationships. Well, when you first came in, you were saying you were telling me that. Uh, you know, I was asking you about being in the minority, okay, mm -hmm. which can be extremely frustrating at times. But you were saying that because you're so new, that it, it 
at times comes off as an advantage? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think it's given me an opportunity mm -hmm. to stand back and learn. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Stand back <coughs> and, and learn, um, watch people, mm -hmm. spend more time in my district, mm -hmm. um, not be in such a hurry to write more laws, mm -hmm. because I will be honest with you, I'm a person that believes we have enough laws. <laughs> I'm, I'm a person of small government. Mm -hmm. I'm very mm -hmm. constitutional conservative, and I think we have enough laws. I think that we need to work to, to fund departments and, and follow the laws we have. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So I'm not you know, working on trying to come up with new ways to make new laws. I'm trying to, um, once we got past the, the radical agenda that they had, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, we're kind of now, we're working on the budget, which is still very frustrating. Um, but I hope that when that's over, and mm -hmm. I've heard that from a lot of people, when that's over, you know, can we really get down to working on some problems mm -hmm. that Michigan families are facing? Do you feel like you can work with the other side? Some of and, them. And do you feel like they can work with you? Some of them. Some of them. Some okay. of them. Alrighty. Okay. Some of them I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's um, it's shocking to even my voters. Mm -hmm. You know, but I can say things are so different than you thought they were. Mm -hmm. You know, the average voter, even mm -hmm. within the Republican Party, and I learned this going through the process and campaigning, mm -hmm. there's four components, I feel like, mm -hmm. just of the GOP. Mm -hmm. You have a grassroots conservative, grassroots mm -hmm. Republicans, you have the GOP, mm -hmm. you have Lansing mm -hmm. Republicans, and then you have just the average voter who just yeah. tends to vote Republican or tends to, mm -hmm. if they're strong in the Second Amendment, they now mm -hmm. tend to vote more Republican. Mm -hmm. um, if they're right to life, they tend mm -hmm. to vote more Republican. Sure. When back, those weren't partisan issues. Mm -hmm. there, I mm -hmm. hear a lot about how, what a great legislator mm -hmm. um, John Dingell was because he was mm -hmm. pro-2A, mm -hmm. he was right. one point pro-life, and things have changed, and you're right, they, it has become so polarized. Mm -hmm. So the problem I see is that there's no connection between those four entities. Mm -hmm. And, and the, I feel the sorriest for the voter that, that mm -hmm. says they have no idea what's going mm -hmm. on. Um, the fighting within the party, mm -hmm. um, even issues that we may take up that they're not hearing about, that isn't being put out. I mean, you really got to follow it closely. Mm -hmm. You can watch mm -hmm. these committee hearings. Mm -hmm. You can research when bills are coming up. But people are working. Mm -hmm. They're raising their family. Sure. They're relying on kind of the news to tell them what's going on, or maybe if their representative has a town hall. Well, you know, I, I, I had the uh, privilege to interview John Dingell many times and talk with him many times, and I know Debbie very well. And uh, the interesting thing about John Dingell and through his life, okay, and he, he lived a, he didn't live your typical legislator's life, okay, I mean, he, he came on early, uh, even as a child, he was exposed to, to, to everybody sitting on Winston Churchill's lap and things really? like that. Yeah, I didn't he, know that. You know, well, his father had been in, you know, for a long period of time. And, but, but talking with John was interesting because you got the sense that once, once the uh, elections were over, there was a certain sense of team, even if they were on different teams technically. They may have been Democrats or Republicans or maybe some independents, but as Dingle said, you know, hey, when it comes to somebody like George Bush Sr., they were friends. Mm -hmm. They shared a lot of common interests. They were both outdoorsmen. They were both NRA people. They were yada, yada, yada. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you, I think that Unfortunately, we've gone, the polarization and everything has pushed people aside. They, they don't put that stuff away and get to know each other mm -hmm. as friends. There you know? are, I, I mm. do see, you know, surprisingly, mm -hmm. relationships in Lansing with, mm -hmm. with people that have built those relationships. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. are, they do have dinner. Mm -hmm. um, I went out to, I have a, one of the representatives, uh, Luke Meerman, mm -hmm. um, is very passionate about foster care. He fosters children, and mm -hmm. his district's pretty far, you know, up north. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Representative Stephanie Young, mm -hmm. who is mm -hmm. the the chair of a committee I serve on, Family, Children, and Seniors. Mm -hmm. She's a Democrat from Wayne County in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were all invited to dinner. There was probably she was actually the only Democrat, and there was probably four or five of us Republicans. Mm -hmm. And with me having guardianship of my grandchildren, mm -hmm. I f have a you know an interest in um, mm -hmm. family court and mm -hmm. different things of that nature. So we had a great dinner. We had a wonderful dinner. And if I would have not known mm -hmm. that she was a Democrat or maybe not agreed with the way she votes on certain mm -hmm. things, I walked away thinking, what a lovely woman. 
and gave each other a hug. Sometimes I think when we meet somebody we don't know, we should just ban politics oh, my, <laughs> and my start son, in, you know, otherwise. It's interesting you mm -hmm. say that because mm -hmm. not being a political family mm -hmm. until 2020. Right, right. And then my mm -hmm. children never really being brought up that way. Mm -hmm. My mother was never that way. Now she really is. Now, mm -hmm. you know, she's become more political. And, uh -huh. uh, but my boys, when my boys were knocking doors for me, my son, mm -hmm. our middle son, Jesse, he would say, how come every time I go to a door, the first question they have is, are you a Republican or a Democrat? <laughs> and I said, Jess, we live in a, a two-party system, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and he goes, why can't I just tell them what you stand for or what you represent? They automatically want to know that question, right. you know, so, right. and mm -hmm. I kind of, I would sort of pull away from it too. I would just, you know, say that I was, you know, mm -hmm. hi, I'm, I'm running to be your representative. Right. Um, I'm a nurse, I'm mm -hmm. a grandma. Mm -hmm. I have some very strong, passionate things that I would like to change mm -hmm. in Michigan. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they would say thank you and take the card. Yeah. And then sometimes they would say Republican or Democrat yeah. and say Republican. <laughs> and they'd say, all right, I'm voting for you. I'd say, well, wait, we have a primary. Like, yeah. there you, there's, mm -hmm. you got to vote for me because there are two other ones. Like, don't. So that was during the primary. And then um, even if they were Democrats, sometimes mm -hmm. they would say, all right, well, well I'm probably not going to vote for you. I'm a Democrat, but I'll look mm -hmm. at it. Or then there was not that many times mm -hmm. where they were mm -hmm. like, I don't even think I was ever told to leave or yeah. get a door mm -hmm. slammed in my face. People are so afraid mm -hmm. to talk to people <laughs> and uh, maybe COVID made that worse. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, everybody was respectful. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. respectful. They would say, no, thank you. Have a nice day. I had a great experience and, and I hope others did as well. So if you weren't in the House of Representatives right now, what would you be doing? Would you be back to nursing? Would you... Well, I had taken, I went mm -hmm. contingent at nursing in mm -hmm. um, 2019, I went contingent. Mm -hmm. My husband and I started, um, he always uh, worked on homes and had his builder's okay. license for many years. Okay. So mm -hmm. we ended up picking up uh, furniture as mm -hmm. a hobby. Okay. And we would uh, refinish some antique furniture. Oh, really? And some old chests and things. Oh, yeah. that's kind of cool. Oh, it was mm -hmm. really cool. It was uh. something that we just really enjoyed doing together. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, the furniture we would have, though, it was crazy because we you could find so many gorgeous pieces just getting thrown away. So uh, we were restoring them, and then they weren't selling. Mm -hmm. So w once we started painting them, and my mm -hmm. husband's like, you are not going to paint this wood. Are you crazy? <laughs> Absolutely not. And I'm like, let me tell you, mm -hmm. when you painted it white or turquoise, it sold like hotcakes. <laughs> Back when that whole vintage market thing was coming around. Yeah, sure. So from that, um, we started, had one cabinet painting job, mm -hmm. and that really, really exploded. So mm -hmm. I went um, contingent at work, mm -hmm. and we were doing cabinets full time. Okay. Um, um, we found a great niche, making really good money because mm -hmm. you could, an average kitchen, maybe it was 3000 to paint their kitchen cabinets. Oh, there's, um, there, there's, some, there's money to be made yeah. for a good entrepreneur in yes. that field. Yeah. And he, um, mm -hmm. he used you know, an industrial sprayer mm -hmm. so that the finish mm -hmm. was like a factory finish. Mm -hmm. We got the process down really well mm -hmm. with the products we used. Mm -hmm. Um, and I could, you know, nurse on the weekends, mm -hmm. uh, do the kitchen cabinets. It was, we used to joke and, and say that people thought we were like Chip and Joanna Gaines because he was like the contractor carpenter guy and I was like the one that was like, you know, color, helping him pick out colors and things like that. So we really had a fun time with it. Jenny, um, you should have never gone to Lansing. That I sounds know. like a... But then, I had... thought, but then I thought, how could I do that with the grandkids? So we yeah. did. We weighed out our options mm -hmm. a lot. You oh. know, my husband, I thought, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you mm -hmm. should run. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm not electable. He's like, you are electable. <laughs> you're, you know, you have, you're personal with people. Why isn't he electable? He just don't like people sometimes. Okay, all right. He's very strong. It's on a his, guy thing. He's, yeah, he's strong on his, uh, mm -hmm. his opinions, his mm -hmm. beliefs. Um, I'm more, I just, I, again, I go back to just mm -hmm. being that nurse and being empathetic. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. people come into my office mm -hmm. and I don't know how many times I've had groups coming mm -hmm. that have an issue that they want to bring and uh, we cry. <laughs> I'm like, I, I feel, I feel your pain. I, I'm a very empathetic person and I want to help so, everyone. So in what is a deep and complex story, your life, who's the greatest influence? Oh my gosh. And why? <laughs> <laughs> I put you on the spot. <laughs> you know, I used to, I would be honest with you, I used to say my mother. Okay. I used to say it was always my mother. Mm -hmm. And I think right now and today, the greatest influencer would probably be my husband. Okay. All right. My husband has okay. always seen more in me than I saw in myself. Mm -hmm. He's always, even in nursing school, I can remember him helping me study for tests. 
You know, the kids, I didn't go back mm -hmm. to school till the kids were in school. Okay. So right. my youngest was five. I was very fortunate mm -hmm. to get to stay home with them mm -hmm. and raise mm -hmm. them, be a stay-at-home mom, sure, sure. be able to breastfeed all three children without mm -hmm. worrying about going to work. <laughs> it was very important to me. And then um, he's just always been very proud of me and mm -hmm. always uplifting of me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm fortunate to be able to see that he's, he's pushed me. Mm -hmm. He's always been my toughest critic, but always my biggest fan. And now him you know, being grandpa to these kids. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, and I want him to know and I try to tell him that and he'll say, you know, I let our business go. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm at home, I'm raising kids and mm -hmm. cleaning dishes and running them back and forth to school. And, and I'm like, but you are, you are even doing a, mm -hmm. a more important job than mm -hmm. I am mm -hmm. because those kids will learn from you and God needed us to raise mm -hmm. them and you needed to teach them those lessons and those things and turn them into good men and a, you know, a good young lady, even if she is a spoiled little <laughs> sassy pants, you know. Um, well, it sounds like you two are pushing the right buttons with each other, to say the we least. We are, we <laughs> balance, we balance. Yeah, that, which, is, which is fabulous. We do. It makes we for do. great. And you work at it, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what, you know, I, you work at it. Mm -hmm. Marriage is work, mm -hmm. it's not easy. You could have given up and quit so many times. Well, that's true. And That's if true. you don't quit, mm -hmm. if you just don't quit, mm -hmm. you stay together. And I feel like that's what I wanted my grandchildren to see. And, and, and I would love to see that in our society as a whole. Mm -hmm. We're not mm -hmm. going to change that overnight. Mm -hmm. I know that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people think, well, the problem with society is we have so many broken homes and mm -hmm. dads, you know, mm -hmm. are disappearing. And, and, and I shouldn't mm -hmm. say that because there are a lot of dads mm -hmm. raising their children and moms right. disappeared. Sure. But, you know, getting back to that nuclear family where mm -hmm. it's been proven over and over again, when there's a mom and a dad in the house, mm -hmm. the children tend to be more well-rounded and have more success in life, mm -hmm. but we're not going to get there overnight. Right. It's not going to change, you know, everyone. Oh, yeah, well, you don't that's get, just hey, the problem. We you don't get anywhere that. overnight, that's for sure. No, there's no doubt. No. What do you enjoy when you're away from the job, you and your husband? What do you enjoy? Now, heaven knows, with three grandchildren, I'm going to no. guess you're going to get in a car and go somewhere. With. <laughs> you know, actually, mm -hmm. sometimes they get so wound up when we get mm -hmm. in the car. Yeah. We go, what were we thinking? We should just stay at home. <laughs> um, hanging out with the kids and the dogs. Okay. Right. I had a picture of mm -hmm. my our two dogs, Missy and mm -hmm. Buddha. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Three grandchildren and two dogs. It's a busy house. It's just um, being quiet, having mm -hmm. dinner together praying around the table, simple things. I was gonna say, is it ever quiet? Not really, no. <laughs> and my husband, he doesn't like noise, mm -hmm. and he has gotten the kids now where they, they know, like when you wake up in the morning, the puppet needs quiet time. Oh, okay. Puppet is not like running around screaming, so they're, they're getting better. Where well they, trained. They're getting better. <laughs> they're, they were a bit excitable, but I think all mm -hmm. kids are right now. Oh, sure. And that's the something mm -hmm. that's other, another thing that's we really need to start watching, because mm -hmm. when we used to babysit them, mm -hmm. I used to say, did she just give them sugar? Because they're bouncing off the walls. And she would say, no, I did, and I did. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, right. Well, it's really just their, mm -hmm. their stimulus that the, you know, we went, our generation, mm -hmm. you, you had commercials, sure. or there was three or four channels, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, two, yeah. Four, two, four, it. seven, 50, yeah. 20. <laughs> you know, now there's a million channels. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. there's YouTube, there's tablets, there's these shorts. Mm -hmm. Their attention span is getting to mm -hmm. 30 seconds. And then their their they their dopamine needs something else. Do you try to pull back on some of that stuff? Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I I know oh, when my yes. kids were we yeah, to. my kids are older too, but when they were younger, you after a while it was like, well, wait a minute. You yeah. Know, why don't we pull back on that? We do. You know? We really do. Mm -hmm. We my husband actually had Bentley look up what the appropriate online time or um, tablet internet type time that's a, that's device a smooth time. way to do that <laughs> and he found out it was like mm -hmm. two to three hours a day okay. for a nine-year-old yeah so anytime mm -hmm. he wants to be on his game a little more than mm -hmm. he should mm -hmm. my husband's like what was that you know good time you know for a child <laughs> your age to be on and he'd say two to three hours papa so yeah we you know no devices past eight o'clock mm -hmm. um limited to you know as, as much as we can limit mm -hmm. them during the day mm -hmm. keeping mm -hmm. youtube off because mm -hmm. youtube is just ridiculous mm -hmm. you think you're watching a good show there's this a for adley that's this this nice yeah. family show yeah. and then the next yeah. thing you know boom here comes something where you're like what right and you're right. get that offer where did you hear that from so yeah it's hard on parents now mm -hmm. it, it, yeah it's, it's not really this hard. is not easy it's, a, it's never been easy 
but it hasn't gotten any easier. No, that's for no. Sure. And I, I know mm -hmm. it's easier to say, mm -hmm. go watch TV, or it's easier right. to give him a tablet. Right. It is right. so much easier, especially mm -hmm. when you're trying to mm. talk to your husband right. or you're trying to return emails. Well, the other thing the is, especially when all of us, whether it's a tablet or whether it's your cell phone or whatever, we spend too much time on we them do. anyways. <laughs> we do. You know, you're in a big meeting and you got mm -hmm. six people around the table and five of them are looking at their they cell are. phone. They yeah. are. Yeah. They are, so exactly. we've been trying to really mm -hmm. be active in limiting that mm -hmm. and trying mm -hmm. to get the kids back out. My husband, mm -hmm. one of the things he does with them that I just love, he mm -hmm. um, <coughs> became really interested in um, mushrooms. Okay. <coughs> so he takes them to, mm -hmm. um, behind, like, uh, behind Flat Rock Community Center, there's a really good just uh, foresty patch. Oh, okay. But they have a ton mm -hmm. of different types of mushrooms growing on trees. Sure. Or stopping by the side of the road. So mm -hmm. they'll go mushroom hunting, and the mm -hmm. kids love it. Mm -hmm. And then my husband, I don't know all the ways he does it, but he brings them home, and then he takes a spore from the mushroom and puts it mm -hmm. in a Petri dish and, mm -hmm. like, um, inoculates it some way and grows it in, like, a medium, like a mm -hmm. chips and wood, and I don't understand the whole concept. Yeah. He's, like, yeah. growing these mushrooms. So okay. he actually just gave a bunch to the kids. Um, principal who loved them, and, and I don't are they lion's mane? I think it's lion's mane. Wow. So edible for cooking, okay. you know, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, getting really, growing a lot of them. He's been mm -hmm. growing microgreens. He really got into that. And I was like, you know, kind of encouraging him to do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, he's, he's not old, but well, that's I, don't think, I don't think though. he really yeah. would ever want to go back to mm -hmm. hard construction. Okay. You know, All I right. think he's looking for something else. So this might be something. And who knows, maybe we could, he could do a little microgreen mushroom business. Never uh, know. I know, and I don't like mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And he always tries to give me a taste of them, and I will not. <laughs> I'm like, absolutely not. He says, some of them taste like chicken. And I'm like, nope. Nope, no I'm way. I'm not doing it. <laughs> well, what, let's, let's focus on you there for a second. Yeah. Your future, okay? Legislators, two-year cycles, it's as if you're running all the time. Yeah. Aspirations going forward for you. What do you, what do you want to do? I like representing people. Okay. I like doing mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, I intend to keep going for as long as they will have me. At the state level? We'll see. Okay. All right. We'll see. Did you ever think of going? We'll see. Hey, here's now, it's only natural that when you're at the state level, you look nationally, okay? Oh, I don't, I couldn't. Uh, no? Okay, no, no. Well, okay. you got to look at the district. Okay. You know, I think that's probably the biggest concern. Is well, the yeah, that's true. You're and right I do like, um, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of jump past the whole local city government well, and, and right into state government. Well, that was going to be my question. Yeah. If you weren't there, yeah. would you reconsider here? Would you think about, because it, it is amazing how many, how many people, beca because everything is so, again, polarized at the national level, when you look at local politics, it's you know it's about trash pickup and police protection mm -hmm. and fire protection, things like that. Uh, a lot of people are skipping past that, you know, and they're not. And you you can never get enough good local nominees. You're right. You know, when it comes to yeah. your own community. Yeah, I've heard you know? I've heard that from a lot of constituents too. Yeah, and I, and that's not yeah. that's no criticism of yeah. anybody around right now. It's just it it is that way when you look at it. You can never have enough good people around. I think I would. Know? I think I would consider mm -hmm. something local at some point. I mm -hmm. thought um, would I go back to nursing? Mm -hmm. I don't know if if the nursing community's changed okay. too much for me right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm very transparent and honest, and I, mm -hmm. I believe in vaccine choice. Yeah, okay, um, I, all right. I, I mm -hmm. did chose not to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. I know things have changed, and it's not mm -hmm. being pushed as hard as it was when everything first mm -hmm. hit. Mm -hmm. So I thought years ago I would open a business and I would help young girls. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, with my daughter, I see so many women, especially in our lower-income communities, mm -hmm. I don't like what's going on. Mm -hmm. I don't like how, you know, um, we, we've got good boys, but we've got some some kind of bad guys that are just taking advantage of single moms. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that we don't have, nobody's really talking about that enough. Mm -hmm. They're trying to, I'd like to, to help them get a path forward, help them to get self-esteem, um, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Hopefully if things change and I can get some legislation passed, I mm -hmm. would really love to do that advocate for some for and some I'm going to women. assume that you're you're going to rerun right yeah absolutely yeah yeah of course okay. absolutely Alrighty. okay absolutely well, I like I like what I'm doing well really interesting do. well that is 
That is a fascinating story. You're, okay. you're a fascinating interview. I'm glad, I'm glad uh, we got to meet today. Yes, thank uh, you. And I wish you uh, luck. Thanks for coming on the show. Continued success. We'll stay in touch, okay, uh, now that we know each other. Uh, for Joe Camilleri, who's our production assistant, I'm Carl Zymack, your host. Thanks for joining us on another installment of Up Close and Personal. We'll see you next time when we feature another one of Taylor's Leaders.